We're forming landscapes and populating them with animals. That's right, it's Eco's first continent from AEG. This world building creation competition pits two to six players against one another in an epic battle to manifest a new continent. Players use elemental energies to form the land and develop life, aiming to obtain over 80 victory points to win the game. Setup begins with each player choosing a color and taking the matching dial token, which begins with the start side aligned to the top, one score marker, and seven energy cubes. Place the scoreboard on the table and place each player's score marker on the starting space. Next, create the initial landscape of one desert tile, one grassland, and two waters. This arrangement is for the first few games, but on subsequent matches you can try alternate configurations such as river, coastal, or islands. Create a supply of the remaining map tiles nearby, sort it into land tiles and water tiles. Place the mountain and forest tokens nearby as well, and set up the organization trays for the animal tokens, placing them within reach of all players. Take the 40 element tokens and place them in the element bag. The player who most recently went for a hike takes the bag and is the first harbinger of the game. More on that in a sec. Does a VR hike count is the question. Finally, create the starting hands and active cards for all players. In your first game, use the pre-selected starting hands by removing all the cards with footprint icons on the bottom left. Sort these into six piles of 12 cards, each based on the footprint icons. Turn them face down, and each player randomly chooses a pile, which becomes their starting set of cards. Three of these cards have a darker footprint icon. These are the active cards and should be placed in front of the player on the table face up. The remaining nine cards are considered the player's starting hand, which they may keep hidden. Shuffle the remaining blue and brown cards into separate face down decks near the supply piles. One note, after you have a few games under your belt, page four of the rule book contains instructions for more varied starting hands and rules for drafting. Gameplay occurs over a series of rounds, each divided into several steps. First, the current harbinger draws one random element token from the bag and reveals it to the group. Each player's dial token contains a key for the element types and the frequency with which they appear. Next, each player, including the harbinger, may place one energy cube on one of their active cards in an uncovered spot of the element drawn. If they have no remaining energy cubes, they may replace an already placed cube to another element spot. Optionally, instead of placing a cube, a player may rotate their dial token clockwise 90 degrees. At this point, any cards with all of their energy spots completely covered now resolve their game effects listed in the center. More on those in a sec. Once all players have either placed an energy cube or rotated their dial token, and after all cards have been resolved, the round starts again with the harbinger drawing a new element. This process repeats until the harbinger draws a wild element token. This element allows players to place any energy cube on any type of icon. After the wild element has been drawn, check to see if the end game has been triggered by any player reaching at least 80 victory points. If not, pass the element bag clockwise to a new harbinger, place all the elements back inside, and start a new round. Gameplay continues with players assigning energy, rotating dials, and creating the world. Let's look at some of the many effects of the game. When a card's energy requirements are completely covered, the owning player announces Eco and then removes all energy cubes from the card, adding them back to their personal supply. Then they carry out the effect in the center of the card. Many of these effects include placing map tiles or features, gaining energy instantly, or even flat out victory points. After the effect is resolved, if there is more than one leaf on the top of the card, Rotate it 90 degrees so that the number of leaves is one less. These indicate how many times a card may be used before it is discarded. If a card only shows one leaf at the top, discard it. If several players announce eco in the same round, resolve the effects clockwise beginning with the harbinger. After each player resolves all their effects, play proceeds to the next person. 
one quick note. If one or more players resolve their eco, subsequent players may choose to remove the energy cube they just placed and rotate their dial token instead. They may choose to do this if another player has resolved effects that disrupt their strategy this round. On a player's dial token, there are two sides which provide their owners with a bonus option when aligned to the top of the card. Depending on the aligned side, the player may immediately reset their dial token to the start side and take the effect. Either gain a card or gain an energy cube to their personal supply, or play a card from their hand to the table. When gaining a card, the player may either look at two cards from the top of either deck, or one from each, and select one to keep in their hand, discarding the other. Or they may take one face-up card from the discarded options of previous players. Card effects also allow players to place game pieces on or attached to the landscape, including placing map tiles, which must touch one tile already in the landscape, placing mountains or forest tokens on any land tile. Some restrictions apply on where you can place these. Placing animal tokens, which are restricted to the terrain types indicated on their token gaining elements, which allow players to instantly place a cube on that energy requirement. They may instead rotate their dial token if they wish. Moving animals to different terrains and more. Once a player has reached at least 80 victory points at the completion of a Harbinger's Reign, the game ends. The player with the highest score wins. And that's Eco's First Continent. I'm Becca Scott, and I know they say Yahweh created the world in seven days, but in our practice game, we did it in just 75 minutes. That's right. You can watch me and my friends play this game and other awesome games on Game the Game, right here on Geek and Sundry. We'll see you there.